teaching roofing companies how to do solar. It's not my first rodeo. And do you guys want to... I don't want to fully convert you into the solar fan, but I want to make you hybrid rock stars. Are you sick of not hitting the numbers you're supposed to hit? Making the money you want to make? Door to Door is a professional collaboration to up level and bring honor and dignity to direct sales. What's up guys, Sam Taggart here and just got back from North Carolina where I was out there for two days helping a roofing company, one, recruit. So we did a whole onboarding and recruiting training where we had about 15 new recruits because I sent Jake, one of my other experts, out to Orlando and I was out in Charlotte and Raleigh helping them kind of funnel people into this big group interview. And the other thing that we really did is help them with solar. A lot of companies are trying to figure out how to do multi-product offerings. So it's like, okay, I'm a roofing company, how do I double dip and sell solar? Or I'm a satellite company, how do I double dip and sell alarms is a common one. Pest control, sell termites, sell you know lawn care services. Because at the end of the day, if you own a customer and you have that relationship, it's a lot less barrier of an entry to you know, go add a different, a different service. Now there's just some tact to it. So one of the things that we offer is just how do you departmentalize each salesperson? Um, how do you compensate for it? How do you, you know, not really blow the initial deal, but make sure to approach it the right way. So it's really cool to kind of dive into some of the best strategies on, you know, we've helped a lot of security companies get into solar, roofing companies get into solar, solar get into roofing. And uh, yeah, if you're interested in us helping you out, we'd love to help you out. Check out some of the clips from the visit in North Carolina. I'm gonna go over Solar 101, why it makes sense, and then I'm gonna go over how to sell it, and then I'm gonna answer questions, okay? So that's kind of the outline of this, okay? What did I care about? The solution it provides for the customer. Right? right? That's all it is. Rude, same thing. What's the solution <coughs> to provide for the customer? Help with your insurance process. You can protect your assets. You know what I mean? Make it look good. What's the solution? Every home has a meter on the side of the house, right? Has anyone ever even looked at the meter? Sure. Yeah. Most of the new ones are digital. The old <laughs> ones have like little oh, thing, spinny right? Spinny thing. Spinny thing. So, what? What does that mean? What does a meter do? Charges the energy. <laughs> and how does it track that? Units. It follows the units and spins or adds. Does anybody know what the unit is called? Kilowatt hours. hours. Kilowatt hours. Okay. So this is another one. You're like, I don't know the difference between a kilowatt, a gigawatt, a megawatt, a watt. Another one to throw on you that's confusing is the measure of power is measured in kilowatt hours. So essentially what solar is doing is localizing the power and going direct to source. You throw solar on the house, okay? So now I got the sun beating on this guy's solar system. What's now happening? Does anybody know what, what, what actually happens to this power? Do we know? It decreases with the right? cut power comes. So, let's think about this. I'm gonna grow a graph. Okay. So, during the day, sun's hitting my house, right? So we'll call this the morning, midday, end of day, okay? Nighttime, there's no sun. Everybody's gonna always ask, how does solar work when it's night? How about the sun out? What about when it snows or it's rainy or it's cloudy? There's no sun. What happens is with solar, your meter actually spins backwards. The power is actually not going into your sockets, if, you, if that makes sense. It's not like solar power panel breaks and your outlets like stop getting electricity. It's the solar panels are just spinning your meter backwards, meaning that power is going back onto the grid and just getting used amongst everybody. Does that make sense? Uh, mm -hmm. So it's just getting used. Like this thing could be powered by solar from some of the, like it's just, it's putting it, sourcing it back 
as if it was like a little teeny power plant feeding the grid. So if you have, so if you have more than what you need for your house, you're sending a lot more back out and you're wasting it. Exactly. That's why they're actually open to this whole thing called net metering. Term you're going to use a lot. What this is called is net metering, meaning net zero. You give us power, they give you power. It's a trade. Does that make sense? So it's like an exchange of power. That's the easiest way to think about it. During the day, during this main sun hour, you're overproducing what you're gonna use. Does that make sense? You're storing up little acorns in your cheeks for the night. <laughs> Or but you're not trip. storing it in your You're storing, thing. It, you're storing it in, the, in the grid. Meaning your meter is backwards and you're like wound up and then you unwind. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? It's like yeah. I'm building up all these credits and I'm using my credit. I don't want to just look at, I want to look at the year and I want to say, okay, this, this is solar. Or this is the sun hours. So meaning if I put solar panel on my house, this is also going to be the production of the solar. Think about it. The solar is going to spin my meter back faster in what months? June, July. These months, right? There was more sun, therefore I produced more solar. Does that make sense? But during the winter months. But during the winter, there's not as much sun, therefore I didn't produce as much solar. So this month, I built up credits to offset this month. Does that make sense? So why do I need to see all 12 months? Is I say, okay, on a yearly basis, you consume 10,000 kilowatt hours, okay? That's an average. So I need to say, what do you do on a yearly basis, more or less? Monthly, that would be like, what, nine? 800. 800. 800 on a monthly, 10,000 on the year. So my goal with solar would be what? Yeah, build a solar system. So put enough panels on the roof to produce 80 to 100% of, of total yearly usage. So what the engineers do when they build your solar design, what they do is they look at the sun hours because we have this cool technologies that actually track the sun pass, the amount of cloudy days, the amount of um, basically sun hours that a roof will hit. Sunroof, that's what it's called. So you can see exactly where the sun hours are most effective on your roof. Does that make sense? So I want to put the solar panels where the sun is going to hit the roof the most so I don't need as many panels to get this production. Does that make sense? So production all comes down to where I'm putting the panels, how many panels I'm putting, and um, yeah, that's it. And then the time of the year, right? So how many sun hours in the day is going to be on those solar panels? If you like what you saw, there's plenty of more where that came from. Join the tribe and hit the button below. Subscribe today.